If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. When you were born again, you received a new nature, one that is supernatural. You were born of the Spirit. Now, I want to reveal a biblical truth about how we interact with the spiritual realm. To fully understand this, we need to remember that the spiritual realm is not some far-off distant place. It surrounds us, intricately woven into the physical world in ways we often miss. Many assume the spiritual realm only becomes relevant during times of deep prayer or through extraordinary supernatural experiences. However, the truth is that every moment of your life, you are in touch with both the earthly and the spiritual realms. Every choice you make, every thought you consider, and every action you take either aligns you with the power of the spirit or pulls you closer to the world. Now, I will explain the distinctions between spirit, soul, and body to bring clarity to your identity and how you interact with the spiritual world. Before we proceed, I invite you to write, take me deeper in the comments as your public prayer of faith. If this message speaks to you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with someone who may need it. Let's grow deeper together in God's word. When we talk about going deeper in the spirit, we mean aligning ourselves with God's will and becoming more sensitive to the Holy Spirit's guidance. The Holy Spirit has been fully present in your life from the moment of your salvation. This fullness isn't reserved for a select group of people. Every believer has the same access to the power and gifts of the Holy Spirit. As you surrender, you'll notice his influence in your decisions, providing peace, power, and clarity in ways you may not have expected. You don't need to wait for a sign from the outside or for circumstances to change. The Holy Spirit is already at work in your life right now, equipping you to face today's challenges and preparing you for eternity. His fullness is within you, waiting for your surrender, not for some external sign, to guide you with peace, wisdom, and strength. It's crucial to recognize that although we have received everything in Christ, Walking in that truth often demands a change in our mindset and heart. Many believers struggle because they expect to see immediate outward changes once they surrender to God. Yet, the real transformation starts from within. The more we align our thoughts, attitudes, and desires with the truth of God's Word, the more we begin to experience the fullness of what He has placed within us. I know that, at times, it may not feel like this. There may be times when you feel like you're lacking power, peace, joy, love, revelation, holiness, grace, compassion, or even the boldness to step into God's calling for your life. But let me assure you, in Christ, you lack nothing. You are not a trinity. You are not three separate beings in one. Instead, you are a person with three dimensions to your nature, spirit, soul, and body. Once you begin to view yourself as a spiritual being first, it changes how you interact with the world around you. You will start to realize that your true strength, wisdom, and identity stem from your connection with God through the Holy Spirit. Rather than reacting to situations with fear or uncertainty, you'll respond with faith, firmly grounded in the knowledge that your spirit, which is united with God's spirit, is always in sync with His perfect will. This shift in perspective allows you to live with confidence, knowing that God is working in you and through you. Regardless of the obstacles you're facing, having confidence in God's work goes beyond simple optimism. It's firmly grounded in the certainty of His promises. The Bible reminds us in Philippians 1.6 that He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. Even when we can't fully comprehend the larger picture, God is intricately crafting our lives for His divine purpose. Trusting in this divine process allows us to meet uncertainty with calm assurance, knowing that nothing is wasted in God's grand plan. Every challenge we face serves as a stepping stone toward a deeper relationship with Him and a more powerful testimony of His grace in our lives. This understanding transforms your entire approach to life. Once you realize that your true identity is found in the Spirit, it starts to affect every aspect of your life. Your priorities will shift your mindset will change, and how you handle trials will no longer be the same. Fear, a natural human response to uncertainty, loses its hold when your spirit is aligned with the Holy Spirit. Instead of fear controlling your decisions, faith becomes your compass, giving you the strength to stand firm even when the future seems murky. The Bible clearly tells us in 2 Timothy 1.7, 
For God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. This is the power we tap into when we let the Spirit lead. Our minds are renewed, our hearts overflow with love, and we walk in the power of God's truth. This is how we rise above the limitations of the flesh and live triumphantly, regardless of external circumstances. When your spirit takes the lead, fear, doubt, and chaotic emotions no longer control you. Instead, your actions reflect a faith that is grounded in the Holy Spirit's power. Rather than being swayed by every change in circumstance, you remain anchored in the unchanging truth of God's Word. This allows you to live from a place of divine authority and perspective. Instead of reacting to situations out of fear, you're responding from the victory that Christ has already won for you. Your identity, deeply rooted in Christ, gives you the confidence to face any challenge with the knowledge that you are victorious, unaffected by the world around you. Your true identity, anchored in Christ, goes beyond worldly definitions. It's not tied to your accomplishments or how you perceive yourself. Your identity is rooted in your regenerated spirit through the Holy Spirit, which marks you as a beloved child of God. Operating from this higher spiritual plane transforms how you respond to life's challenges. You'll start to realize that the things that once troubled you are now beneath your feet as you stand in the authority given to you by God. This authority is deeply rooted in your connection to Him through the Holy Spirit. While society may attempt to define you by your successes, failures, or past mistakes, none of these things determine who you are in Christ. According to 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Your identity in Christ is secure, and this understanding changes everything. When you see yourself as God sees you, fear of failure, insecurity, and doubt begin to lose their grip. You start walking in the confidence and authority that comes from being a beloved child of God. This knowledge empowers you to live beyond the limitations of your body and the fluctuations of your emotions. It is from this place of spiritual strength that you can face every trial with perseverance and every season with hope. While the body may experience pain and the soul may feel discouraged, the spirit remains unwavering and steadfast. This stability comes from abiding in Christ, just as a branch abides in the vine. As stated in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. When we stay rooted in His presence, we remain unshaken, even in life's most difficult storms. Though the world may cause our physical bodies to suffer and our emotions to waver, a spirit that is in alignment with God stands firm, continuously drawing strength and sustenance from an eternal source. When we abide in Christ, we are connected to a constant supply of peace and joy, regardless of the trials we face. This unshakable strength is not something we muster on our own. It is deeply rooted in Christ's finished work on the cross. The Spirit is impervious to the enemy's attacks and life's hardships, continually drawing from God's strength and guiding us through the darkest of seasons. Though our emotions may fluctuate and our bodies may grow weary, our spirits remain empowered by the Holy Spirit, which is a constant source of strength and wisdom. From this inner wellspring of power, we can draw peace in times of chaos, joy in moments of hardship, and clarity when confusion surrounds us. This is the foundation upon which you can build a life of victory. This might sound simple, but it's profoundly transformative. Recognizing your true nature as a spiritual being alters everything about how you navigate life. If you live as though your body and soul are all that matter, you will be limited by your thoughts, emotions, and physical experiences. But your spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, is already connected to God's wisdom, strength, and peace. If you're ready to explore this deeper understanding of your spiritual identity, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss future insights like this one. Take a moment to reflect. How are you aligning your soul with your spirit? Let us know in the comments below. Understanding the distinction between your spirit, soul, and body is key. Once you grasp this foundational truth, your understanding of how you engage with the spiritual realm will become clearer. Your true identity resides in the spirit, the part of you that is connected with God and already in relationship with Him. As you begin to understand the interaction between these three parts of your nature, many aspects of your prayer life, ministry, and relationship with God will start to make more sense. You will also understand why you feel certain things at some times and not at others. 1. 
Thessalonians 5.23 reminds us, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This scripture highlights the distinction between the body, soul, and spirit. Every believer experiences the tension between the soul and spirit. Your soul, made up of your emotions and intellect, is where decisions are made, but it must be led by the spirit. When your spirit, aligned with God, guides your emotions and decisions, you begin to reflect His will. This alignment brings greater clarity, peace, and a deeper connection with God, allowing you to experience the abundant life He has promised. Many believers misunderstand the relationship between the soul and the spirit. When we operate out of the soul, we're prone to doubt, confusion, and frustration. But when we allow the spirit to lead, we tap into God's eternal perspective. Spiritual maturity isn't about gaining more knowledge or performing outward religious acts. It's about developing a deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. This relationship grows as you learn to let go of control and allow the Spirit to guide your life. As you make this transition, you'll notice that your decisions are no longer driven by fleeting emotions or external pressures, but by the steady, guiding presence of the Holy Spirit within you. One of the most profound aspects of spiritual growth is learning to remain stable and secure in your spirit, even when everything around you feels uncertain. Life's circumstances may change, but the foundation of your spirit, grounded in Christ, remains firm. Spiritual freedom is a life filled with peace and joy, not because everything around you is perfect, but because you're connected to the one who is perfect. Spiritual freedom isn't about avoiding life's challenges, it's about facing them with the wisdom and strength that come from the Holy Spirit. When your spirit takes the lead, you are no longer a prisoner to your emotions or circumstances. Instead, you are free to live in the fullness of God's peace, joy, and strength, no matter what is happening around you. This freedom enables you to walk confidently, knowing that God is working everything together for your good. This is where true freedom is found, freedom from fear, doubt, and confusion. It's essential to understand this difference because the enemy often tries to blur the lines between your soul and spirit. When your soul leads, you find yourself being driven by emotions, desires, and circumstances. But when the spirit takes its rightful place, you rise above temporary feelings and worldly distractions, resting in the eternal truths of God's word. This is why the Bible emphasizes the importance of renewing our minds and setting our hearts on heavenly things. Only through the spirit, can we fully access the divine realities intended for us. The renewal of the mind isn't something that happens once and is done. It's a continuous process. Each day, we need to choose to align our thoughts with God's word, casting aside thoughts that don't agree with his truth. As we do this, our hearts become more aligned with heaven's perspective, and we begin to view life through God's eyes. This transformation of the mind is vital for spiritual growth because it allows us to understand God's will and live according to his purposes. I want to clarify this carefully to avoid any confusion. While spirit and soul are distinct aspects of your nature, the boundary between them is not as sharply defined as some might assume. The connection between the soul and spirit is deeper than any metaphor can fully describe. Though they serve different roles, they work together in remarkable ways. When your spirit is aligned with God, it influences your thoughts and emotions. Conversely, when your soul is troubled, it can hinder your ability to hear the spirit. We must not overlook this nuance, as scripture speaks of the intertwining of the soul and spirit. They are not completely separate. It's important to recognize that the soul and spirit are deeply connected. Although that they perform different functions, they significantly impact one another. For instance, when your spirit is in tune with God's truth, it begins to shape your emotions, thoughts, and decisions. Conversely, when your soul is unsettled or distracted, it can cloud your ability to hear the spirit clearly. This is why maintaining spiritual health is crucial. It enables your soul and spirit to work in harmony, guiding you to make decisions that reflect God's will. In the Old Testament, the soul and spirit were often seen as interconnected, representing different aspects of human experience. But through Christ, we now understand the spirit as the core of our identity, directly connected to God. While we can't delve into every detail here, it's vital to recognize that when we talk about the soul and spirit, we're often describing different functions of human experience. Take a moment to reflect on how you honor God through your body. 
Is there something you can do to improve both your physical and spiritual well-being? Share your journey in the comments, and if this message encourages you in your walk with God, don't forget to like the video. The body, your earthly vessel, is how you interact with the physical world. It's through your body that you experience what you see, hear, and feel. While we often emphasize the spirit as the most significant part of our being, we must not overlook the importance of the body. Our physical bodies are gifts from God given to us for a purpose. They allow us to engage with the world, carry out the mission God has assigned to us, and express worship through actions like prayer, service, and praise. Taking care of the body through discipline and respect is a way of honoring God. This doesn't mean idolizing our physical appearance, but rather using our bodies as instruments for His glory. While it's easy to dismiss the body's role in spiritual matters, we must recognize that the body is a vessel God has given us to fulfill His purposes on earth. Through our physical senses, we connect with the world, share the gospel, and serve others. When your body is surrendered to God, it becomes an instrument for His glory. Stewardship over your physical body goes beyond just taking care of your health. It's about treating your body as a vessel for God's work. When you're physically healthy, you are better equipped to fulfill the calling God has placed on your life. You have more energy to serve, more endurance to persevere, and a clearer mind to focus on His will. Honoring your body isn't just about avoiding harm, but actively cultivating strength and vitality so that you can run the race set before you with endurance. Taking care of your body through rest, proper nutrition, and discipline is a reflection of stewardship over the life God has given you. In this way, even the physical becomes a reflection of the spiritual. Your body connects you to the earthly realm, and when it breaks down, you disconnect from this realm and remain connected only to the spiritual realm. Your body is how you engage with those around you, as most of your conversations and interactions happen in the physical world. The body itself is not inherently evil, though many may view it that way. Though our physical bodies are subject to the limitations and frailties of this world, they are meant to be vessels for God's glory. The way we treat our bodies, how we care for, nourish, and use them, is important to God. Scripture urges us to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to Him. This means understanding that even in our daily tasks, whether eating, working, resting, or serving, we can honor God by using our bodies in ways that reflect His goodness and purpose. This confusion arises from New Testament language. Sometimes, the word flesh refers to the physical body, while other times, it refers to the sinful nature or its cravings. Due to this, we often blur the lines and assume the body itself is sinful. In reality, your body can be used either as an instrument of disobedience or as a tool for obedience. As 1 Corinthians 6.19 states, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you and that you are not your own? The physical body, far from being inherently sinful, is actually the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Your body is a tool, a vessel carrying the other parts of your being. When you look into a mirror and see your reflection, you're observing your body, not your spirit or soul, but the physical form through which you experience the world. Thinking of it this way allows you to be more heaven-focused and more attuned to the supernatural. Being heavenly-minded doesn't mean we ignore the realities of this world. Instead, it involves seeing everything through the lens of eternity. It means understanding that every action, decision, and moment is an opportunity to store up treasures in heaven. Living with eternity in view prevents us from being weighed down by temporary challenges or fleeting pleasures. Instead, we walk with purpose, recognizing that our true reward isn't found in this life, but in the one to come. This eternal mindset strengthens us to endure hardships with joy and pursue holiness with passion. When we live with our eyes set on eternity, our perspective shifts away from the temporary concerns of life toward the promise of eternal rewards. Instead of being consumed by earthly challenges, we realize that we are spiritual beings, having a temporary physical experience guided by a higher purpose. This shift in focus allows us to face difficulties with grace and joy, knowing that these temporary trials are working in us an eternal weight of glory. 2 Corinthians 4.17 each challenge we encounter provides an opportunity to exercise faith, 
trust in God's plan and build a testimony of His faithfulness. When we live for eternity, we discover that even the smallest acts of obedience hold significant meaning in God's grand design. By keeping eternity in mind, trials are transformed into opportunities for deeper faith and trust in God. We come to see our present circumstances as temporary, but the lessons learned and the character shaped through them hold eternal value. This change in perspective empowers us to endure hardships with patience and joy, recognizing that God is using every situation to mold us into His image and prepare us for the eternal reward awaiting us. With an eternal mindset, trials lose their sting, and we face them with perseverance and hope, knowing that our true citizenship lies in heaven. Rather than being crushed by life's difficulties, we see them as stepping stones, leading us to greater faith, deeper trust in God, and a clearer understanding of His love. Viewing our circumstances this way shifts our focus from short-term pain to long-term purpose. While the body connects us to the earthly realm, it isn't at our true identity. Our soul, the realm of decision, comprises our mind, will, emotions, and personality. Why do we associate the soul with the mind, will, and emotions? Psalm 42, one says, Why are you downcast, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? Here, the psalmist expresses feelings of depression and sadness, emotions that are experienced within the soul. According to Strong's interlinear reference for this verse, the soul is defined as a living being, life, self, person, desire, passion, appetite, and emotion. Through simple deduction, we conclude that the soul consists of the mind, will, emotions, and personality. Scripture draws a clear line between the body, soul, and spirit. While the body and spirit are clearly defined, it leaves what remains, the soul, there's some overlap between the soul and the spirit. For example, some argue that Christians can be affected by demons because they believe demons cannot inhabit the spirit or body, but may influence the soul. This is an example of drawing too sharp a distinction, leading to misunderstandings. The influence of the Holy Spirit on your spirit doesn't remain confined within. It affects every part of you. As your spirit grows stronger in communion with God, the effects become visible in your thoughts, emotions, and decisions. You begin to reflect the character of Christ more fully, and the fruits of the Spirit – love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control – become more evident in your daily life. This inner transformation also affects how you interact with others, as you are empowered to love and serve with a heart aligned with God's will. What the Holy Spirit does in your spirit impacts your soul as well. The soul is a dynamic part of your being, constantly processing thoughts, emotions, and desires. It is the battlefield where the struggle between the flesh and the spirit occurs. This is why it's vital to fill your soul with God's word, aligning your will with His and allowing His truth to guide your choices. Important to recognize that the soul and spirit are deeply connected. Although they perform different functions, they significantly impact one another. Meditating on scripture involves more than just reading. It's about internalizing God's truth until it transforms your entire being. Psalm 1, 2 encourages us to meditate on His Word day and night. This consistent focus shifts our desires, renews our minds, and provides us with wisdom for every decision. Meditating on scripture goes beyond simply reading the words on a page. It's about absorbing God's truth and letting it shape your thoughts, emotions, and actions. Psalm 1, 2 speaks of the righteous person who meditates on God's law day and night. This continual meditation transforms the way we think and live, aligning our desires with God's will. It also becomes a spiritual weapon, enabling us to resist lies, temptations, and distractions that try to pull us away from God's path. By immersing ourselves in His Word, we arm ourselves with divine wisdom making decisions that honor Him and fulfill His purpose for our lives. This ongoing renewal helps you make choices that lead to life, peace, and fulfillment. The soul is the seat of decision-making, the place where we choose whether to follow God's will or pursue our own desires.